so what are we going to learn today so today's topic uh, is part of a chapter called as human reproduction and under that i've chosen a very specific concept which is the structure of a human spermatozoon so let's look at this uh, topic for today so the topic is structure of a human spermatozoan this is the typical scientific term for a human sperm it's the complete term for a human sperm so we can simply call it as the structure of a human sperm so what is the prerequisite for you to learn this particular uh, topic so you need to have understood the concept of spermatogenesis and specifically under that spermatelioses or what we call as spermiogenesis uh, that concept should be very thorough uh, that is a pre fertilization event but going ahead why am i calling the topic as structure of a human spermatozoan why not simply call it as structure of a of an animal sperm that's because the sperm structure is going to vary considerably with respect to different animals uh, there are some species of drosophila which have giant sperms right uh, the octopus sperm or the cockroach sperm etc are going to be a bit different compared to human sperms though there are a lot of similarities so we are going to restrict ourselves to the structure of a human sperm so the first question is why should i learn this particular topic so the topic becomes relevant in two cases one is going ahead you have only learnt let us say the concept of pre fertilization events in human reproduction you need to go ahead and understand the concept of what are the various steps that will help in formation of a zygote that is steps of fertilization in order to learn steps of fertilization you need to understand the structure of the human sperm that's very relevant apart from that even when you comes to application of uh, let us say human reproduction for example we want to diagnose why exactly a male suffers from infertility so learning the structure of a sperm also helps in the application level right so let's go ahead and look at the structure of a human sperm so human sperm is microscopic motile male gamete and it shows the presence of these parts what are the parts that are going to be seen firstly it shows the presence of a part that is called as the head region i'll simply call it as part 1 that's the head region nextly it shows the presence of a tiny constricted area this constricted area is going to be called as the neck region that is part number 2 then there is a cylindrical part that is present and this cylindrical part is going to be part number 3 that is referred to as the middle piece so hence forth i'll call that as part number 3 and then of course there is a flagellum that is seen and this is part number 4 that i'm going to refer to as the tail so that's going to be part number 4 so human sperm shows mainly four different parts a head a tiny neck a middle piece and a tail so let's go ahead and look at each of these parts in detail as you can see many biologists describe the human sperm uh, to resemble a tadpole of course tadpole is a multicellular macroscopic structure but they say it has a tadpole like structure which is correct but to be more specific the human sperm is a flat tadpole okay it is a flat tadpole so this whole structure if you look at it in 3d you'll realize it's a flat structure let's look at the details of each of these parts one by one so we'll start off with the head region so when you look at the head of the human sperm first thing that you will realize is the head of the human sperm is shaped like a torpedo so it's like a flat torpedo okay why is it shaped this way mainly this is for two purposes one is the human male 
gamete is a motile structure so in order to move through the female reproductive tract it requires to have a streamlined shape so this pointed structure of the head gives it that streamlined shape apart from of course a longitudinal body secondly being pointed helps it maneuver very easily through the corona radiata layer okay of course it is going to keep digesting it which you will be learning in the topic called fertilization but also moving through the corona radiata cells that is made much more easier because of this pointed nature okay so the head is pointed torpedo shaped the first part that you see in the head this part is actually a cap shaped structure it's a flat cap like a pirate's cap okay so it's a flat shaped structure and is a membrane bound organelle which is a modified lysosome called as acrosome so part number 1 of the head is going to be a modified lysosome called as acrosome acro means towards the tip you all have learnt about acrocentric nature acro is towards the tip zoma refers to body it's a body present towards the tip acrosome acrosome is a modified lysosome by now you are going to be familiar how the acrosome is derived it is derived from the vesicles that come from the golgi bodies of the spermatid and all those lysosomes will merge and take up this particular shape so acrosome is a modified lysosome means it has to have hydrolytic enzymes there are hydrolytic enzymes present and all the hydrolytic enzymes that are present here they belong to three categories together we call them as sperm lysins what are those enzymes what are they going to help in etc is going to be a different topic altogether which was which is not going to be dealt with in this topic that we are looking at right so those are sperm lysins which are hydrolytic enzymes present within the acrosome present towards the tip right even the location of the acrosome is so relevant so that as it moves ahead it can continue to digest the egg membranes that are seen the layers that are present around the human egg behind the acrosome is part number 2 which is a flat ovoid structure and this is the haploid nucleus this is the haploid male nucleus which contains the paternal set of 23 chromosomes will all sperms contain x will all sperms contain y no i'm sure these are concepts that you already know okay so the haploid nucleus can either contain x chromosome or y chromosome if it happens to be a normal sperm so this is a haploid nucleus with a paternal set of chromosomes what is good to know here is all the chromosomes are present in a condensed state so dna is present in a condensed state inside this right it is present just behind the acrosome so that easily it can be put into that entire nucleus can be shifted into the egg during the process of fertilization these are the parts of part number 1 which is going to be the head region right let's go to the next part next part as i said is a constriction that's the constricted part so what is present in this constricted part let me draw this constricted part a little more bigger for you to understand let's say that is the constriction we are looking at what is the name of the constriction it's called as the neck what's present in the neck neck shows the presence of two centrioles or a pair of centrioles that are present at right angles to one another so there are a pair of centrioles present in the neck region okay those are the pair of centrioles the uh, names of the centrioles are with respect to or perspective from the head region so the one that is closer i'll draw it as a dot here for diagrammatic purpose so the first centriole that is present towards the head region that centriole is called as the proximal centriole proximity means close so this is called as the proximal centriole what is the proximal centriole required for 
Now, all of you have cell division taking place every day in your body. You need blood stem cells to produce blood cells. You have epithelial tissues regenerating regularly, etc. Right? Where is the, where are the spindle fibers coming for that division? So, those spindle fibers are going to come from centrioles. Where did you get your centrioles from? All of you got your centrioles from your father. Okay? So, during fertilization, which you will be learning later, when the nucleus with the paternal set of chromosomes is put into the egg, the proximal centriole is also sent in. Okay, so all of us have got our centrioles from our fathers. Okay, so that is the proximal centriole required for the division of the zygote. The next centriole present a little away in the neck region, the second centriole. That centriole, what is it going to be called as? If this is proximal, this is farther away, so it has to be called as the distal centriole because it is a little far away to the head compared to the proximal centriole. What is the function of the distal centriole? I will not say it right now, but I will tell you in a few minutes. Okay, So, I am going to come back to the distal centriole a few minutes later. That is going to be our part number 2, which is the neck region, which has a pair of centrioles. Right. Now, moving ahead, you will find that I am coming to part number 3. Part number 3 is a cylindrical structure. It is almost like an oval cylinder. It is a flat cylindrical structure that I see here and this part is called as what? It is called as the middle piece. What is present in the middle piece? In the middle piece, I am going to have anywhere from 50 to 75 mitochondria. 50 to 75 mitochondria are going to be present neatly. Each mitochondrion is going to be in the shape of a sausage and these mitochondria are not haphazardly put in the middle piece. Instead, they are going to be neatly arranged in the form of a spiral structure and those are mitochondria which are present in a spiral structure. So, they are arranged one below the other neatly and there will be another set present on the other side this way. So, I have just drawn 6 here. So, there will be such total around 50 to 75 mitochondria which are going to be arranged neatly one below the other. That is one mitochondria, another one, a third one, a fourth one present and on the other side I am going to have another four. Okay, that is how the structure is going to be present like this. Right? So, when they come together you will end up having a spiral structure that is going to be seen. So, it is going to be present as a spiral structure. Those are mitochondria. The entire assemblage of mitochondria is called as a Neburn kern. Entire, okay, Neburn kern means near the nucleus. So, entire mitochondrial assemblage is together called by a common term called as Neburn kern, which is an assembly of these mitochondria. What are these mitochondria supposed to be for? Male gamete is motile. So, it requires energy for movement. Correct? And also for its, just for its survival also it requires ATP. So, and it needs more ATP for movement. Mitochondria will produce the ATP necessary for this particular sperm to move. That's going to be a very relevant, um, you know, neat level question or even um, Olympiad level question where they can ask you why exactly are so many mitochondria required, number one. And secondly, uh, why are these mitochondria present, you know, in a spiral manner so that I have an abundance of ATP produced in the middle piece uh, region of the sperm. That's why the middle piece region is called as the engine room. You have some old AIPMT, which is like the previous version of NEAT. There used to be that question, which is the engine room of the sperm? So, engine room is going to be the middle piece because of these mitochondria. Surrounding the mitochondria as a thin film, I'm going to have cytoplasm. Remember, cytoplasm is also present in the head. Not, it's not. It's not that uh, there is no cytoplasm there. There will be cytoplasm present even in the head region. But surrounding the mitochondria, there will be a thin film of cytoplasm present. Why? Because this is the cytoplasm that is going to supply pyruvic acid to the mitochondria, right? So, it, cytoplasm will undergo glycolysis, give that pyruvic acid to the mitochondria which is present just next to it. That thin film of cytoplasm that is present 
you know around the spiral neburn kern that thin film of mito of cytoplasm is called as the manche manche uh manche means a cuff you have a sleeve cuff no so it is like a cuff okay like this so manche is a thin film of cytoplasm present around the neburn kern in the middle piece region right then i'm going to come to part number 4 so part number 4 that is present is a uh, is tail part number 4 is tail what is the tail comprising of tail actually is going to be a flagellum this is the only flagellated cell in the human species you have ciliated cells present elsewhere but flagellated cell this is the only one in the human species so that is present as a flagellum so that entire boundary that i have drawn is the cell membrane if you remember eukaryotic flagellum shows a membrane around it which is the cell membrane the fluid mosaic structure is present there is that correct so that's the flagellum but inside i must have a core of microtubules what's the core of microtubules of a cilium or a flagellum called that's correct it is going to be called as an axoneme so i am going to have an axoneme that runs through the mitochondria and is going to go through the tail extending beyond the tail okay and that axoneme which has a 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules is derived from what axoneme should come from somewhere no so it has to come from the basal body basal body is a modified centriole distal centriole will get modified to produce the basal body and that basal body gets modified the 9 plus 0 arrangement gets modified to produce the 9 plus 2 arrangement which runs through the neburn kern and moves through the tail and emerges out as an exposed piece that exposed piece of axoneme uncovered by the plasma membrane at the end the small part of the tail is called as the push piece or it is called as the end piece it gives the right amount of propelling required to push the sperm forward okay so uh, this is going to be the structure and this whole thing is going to be part number 4 which is the tail which is actually a flagellum so what kind of questions can come with respect to sperm structure so they can ask you what is the fate of the proximal centriole they can ask you if i take a section let us say suppose i take a section as a transverse section through the middle piece what am i going to notice that is also a question that can come uh, in kvpy or it can come in the olympiads etc so what am i going to notice if i take a section so in a section this is what i see so that's the cell membrane of the neburn kern of the middle piece region and right in the center that is this particular part what am i going to notice this is where i'm going to have that 9 plus 2 arrangement okay so i have those doublets that are going to be seen how many of those doublets nine sets of doublets that are going to be seen okay so nine sets of doublets that are going to be seen here and once those nine sets are seen i'm going to have central doublets present in a central sheet is that right that is the arrangement that i'm going to see right in the center which is the axoneme part and around that what am i going to notice i will notice the presence of mitochondria so here i'm going to have these mitochondria that are going to be seen the cut portion of the mitochondria which gets obliquely cut so that is what i see here okay the mitochondria present as a spiral okay all around here here i am able to show only two sets there are all those sets present together as a as a cut section okay so that's what you notice and then there is going to be a thin film of cytoplasm that is present here and that thin film of cytoplasm present around the uh, mitochondria is going to be called as the manche okay these are the questions that can come with respect to the structure with pertaining to the structure of the human sperm right thank you so much